पावन परम दया प्रेम दास पर भाव की कुमार श्री नित्यानंद गुरु की जय प्रेम पुरुषोत्तम सचिदानंद श्री गौरंग महाभू की जय गाई गौर परमानंद हरिदेव श्री नव द्वीप मापु धाम की जय गुण मंग कर श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की वंदे विश्व पर कमला वंदे विश्व पर पर कमला
My heart, like flowers, thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadiya Parmaradatama Guru Pada Padma, Nitya Pravishta Om Vishnu Pada Ashtota Rasta Sri Rupanuga Charivarya Sila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev and to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vanchakal Paturu Pasta, Kripa Sindhu Bevaja, Pudita Nam Bhavani Guru Vaishnavi. Srila Guru Deva So today, by the causes mercy of Sri Guru and the Koranga, we began to celebrate the divine disappearance of Srila Jiva Goswami Pad by discussing his great contribution, the Shatsandarva, beginning with Tattva Sandarva. So this morning we discussed that Srila Jiva Goswami has begun in his Mangala Charnam, in the beginning, to honor Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Varnam Tusha Krishnam Sangha Upangastha Parsadam Yagyai Sankirtana Prayer Yajanti Hi Sumed Krasa Anta Krishnam Bahi Gauram He is Krishna inside and outwardly he is covered with the golden complexion of Srimati Radhika. Many persons, they cannot believe that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. They think Krishna may be Bhagavan. I have read it in the Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? But I have not seen anything about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Bhagavad Gita. But there in Bhagavad Gita, Arjun said to Krishna, Swami Vatmanatmanam Vaitatvam Purushottama. Oh my Lord, the demigods and the demons, they cannot know you. But indeed, only you yourself know yourself by your internal potency. Hmm? Only you can know you by your internal potency. So Krishna, he does not know himself fully. Hmm? Why? Because he cannot fully taste his own beauty. Beauty is perceived according to the extent of our love. Hmm? Kamsa Maharaj, he sees Krishna, oh, and he's, oh, he's Yamaraj, death personified. Because he has no love. 
But the coward boys, they say, oh my Saka. My dear friend, and Madhya Shoda, she has more love. She says, oh my Lala, oh my child. And gopis, they have more love. And out of all the gopis, Krishna said, only Radhika, through the power of her praying, she can taste all of my sweetness hmm? fully, but I cannot do it. Hmm? Krishna wanted. Krishna Ramaduri Krishna Upajai Lob Samyak Ashwaditi Nare Rahiman Iksov. Krishna became greedy to relish his own sweetness when he saw his reflection in the jewels of Navabrindavan. But because he could not, he was greedy, but he could not relish his own sweetness. Because he's in the situation, the position of Vishai, the object of love, he will have to take the position of Ashray, the abode of love for himself. So Rahiman Ikshob, his own mind was uh, disturbed. His own mind was depressed. He is Satchidananda Bigraha, full of Ananda. Raso Vaisaha, Saivayam Latanandi Bhavati. He is full of Rasa, but not being able to know himself, relish himself, know his own beauty. Then, his own sweetness. Then, he felt unfulfilled. So, Swayam eva apanatmanam vetatvam purushottama. Hey purushottam. That is, Krishna is Leela purushottam. Hey Leela purushottam. Your avatar is Mariada purushottam, Ramachandra. But you have another form, Prema purushottama. <coughs> that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in that form, by Taking shelter of your internal potency, Radhika, you become Gaura. Anta Krishnam Bahi Gauram. And then you know yourself, how beautiful and sweet you are. So, yes, Raso Vaisaha. In the Taitari Upanishad, it is said, Supreme Lord is the embodiment of all Rasa. But if you only say that Krishna of Brindavan is the Supreme Truth, then your idea of the Parabrahma, Supreme Truth, is only not fully Rasik Shekhar, only half Rasik Shekhar. Because half the Rasa is relished by the object of love, Krishna, and the other half by the Ashraya of love, Radhika. So, you can say that Krishna is Rasik Shekhar, but unless you accept that Krishna himself is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then your idea is only half Rasik Shekhar, so we can't accept it. Krishna is a Purna. Om Purnam Madha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishate Krishna is complete. And so, to be Raso Vaisaha, the complete embodiment of Vishay Jatiras and Ashray Jatiras, in one form he is Brajandanandan Sham Sundar, and in another form he is Sachinandan Gaur Sundar. Hmm? But same person. Chaitan Lilam Ritasa Thara Shatat Shatadha Dasa Dike Bohija Hoite Sadhu Guru Prasade Thara Jay Aswade Sehi Chaitan, Chaitanya Lila, Sarovara Akshaya, Manohang Sat Charahatahate. Srila Krishna Skarvaj Goswami Pari is saying, Chaitanya Lila Amritasa, the, the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they are the essence of Amrita, nectar. Tara Shata Shata Dara. And, sorry, the, the pastimes of Sri Krishna. They are like uh, the essence of nectar and they are flowing in ten directions. Ulava, Sarovara is Akshay, inexhaustible, so it's never depleted. So those streams flowing in ten directions all at once, this is Krishna. Krishna Leela Maritasa Tara Shatra Shatada. 
not ten directions, hundreds and hundreds of directions. Shata, shata. Hmm? So, and what is that reservoir from which all the Krishna Lila is coming? Chaitanya Lila. Hmm? So, Manohangsa, Charahata Hoite, oh my dear mind, become like a swan, always floating on the reservoir of Chaitanya Lila. So those who will enter into Goralila, then easily, by His mercy, they will enter into Krishna Lila. If someone will sink into the Ganga in Navadvipa, Nigai Ghat, he will come up in Keshi Ghat in Vrindavan. Gaura Prema Rasa Nave, Yetaranga Jebadube, Sai Radha Madhavantaranga. Srila Thakur said, if someone will sink in the ocean of Gaura Prema, then he'll become the Antaranga Parikara, a very intimate internal associate of Radha Madhav. So our relationship with Mahaprabhu is only Dasya Bhav. Not Madhuya Rasa. This idea is only Goranga Nagaris. Don't follow this. His name is Mahaprabhu, the great Prabhu, Master. That indicates that we are all Das in relation to the Mahaprabhu. And his name is Mahaprabhu is because if you be related to him as Das and he is your Prabhu, then he'll give you Mahabhav, which is only Gopis. Mood. Only Gopis have Mahabhav. Some Priyanama Sakas like Subha or Jol, they can touch it a little bit, but not so much. But only Gopis have Rudabhav, Adi Rudabhav, and so on. So, in the beginning, Srila Jiva Goswami part has firmly establish this point. Don't think Krishna is a great tattva and Mahaprabhu is some, something less. Minimize in any way. Satchisunam nandishwara pati so tattvai guru baram mukunda prastattaram smara param yasam sprenumana smaramana. Oh my dear mind, always remember that the son of Nanda Mah the son of Sachi is the son of Nanda Maharaj. Same person, not another person. And he is relishing that part of rasa that he could not realize in the Nikunjas of Vrindavan. He realizes in the Maha Sankirtan rasa in Navadip Dham. So, then Srila Jiva Goswami part, we discussed this morning, how he showed that the conditioned souls, they cannot know the truth because of their defects. And all the different methods, Nik Nikila, Praman, Paritschet, all the different types of methods of investigation to know the truth, they all fail. Only one is successful. Shabda Praman. And this Shabda Praman, meaning the Vedas, this is not... Don't take this in a weak sense. The weak sense is, if you listen to the mantras of the Vedas or you read them, you can understand what they mean. Hmm? So there are some words... They're in sentences, and these sentences have a meaning, and you intellectually understand that meaning. This is not what Shabda Praman means. Hmm? This is not what Shabda Praman means. Shabda Praman means that when you are hearing, as you are hearing, that see Krishna Himself is disclosed to your consciousness. That is called Spurti. Spurti. There is an internal vision of Sri Krishna as you are listening there and then. So, this is actually Shabda Praman. Otherwise, our Guru Prampura, it will be like Chinese whispers. Right? You know Chinese whispers? It's a game. Because you don't go to parties and play games, so you would never know. But I have heard from someone. That someone whispers something in someone's ear and they whisper to someone else and they pass it around the room and when it comes back, then the message has been changed. Hmm? Just like in the First World War, there was not good communications. So there were some soldiers at the front. Hmm? So the soldier at the front, he told the bombs were going off. It was very loud. So he told another soldier, send reinforcements, we're going to advance. So then that soldier ran over to the next trench and said, Send reinforcements. We 
Okay. And what did you say? Oh, okay. And so then the next one, he took it to them. They were going back and the message was going back miles to the where the officers were and more soldiers. And then the last soldier arrived there. Send three and four pence. We're going to a dance. Uh -huh. So this is... <laughs> if, the, if the tradition is passed down, only one person is speaking to another and one person is speaking to another, then how will the Guru Parampara maintain perfect knowledge? Along the way, someone will change something. They'll alter, alter something. And gradually it will go off the track. So this can never be Guru Parampara. So Shabda does not mean, I, I explain this to you and you intellectually understand it and you explain it to someone else and he intellectually understands it. Shabda Praman means there is no difference. Jiva Goswami explains actually in the Mangala Charnam. Just after the Mangala Charnam, it's a tradition that you have to describe four things. It is called Anubandha Chatustai. Anubandha Chatustai. Chatustai means four, and Anubandha means connections. There's some connection between four aspects of the text. Hmm? Anubandha Chatustai. So, the first one is called Vishai, the subject. So, here, the subject of the hmm, Sandarbas is Sri Krishna. Vadanti tat tattva vidas tattvam yad jnana madhvayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabda chai. The non-dual absolute conscious reality which is experienced in gradually fuller stages as Brahman, Paramatma and finally Bhagavan. This is the subject. Then the next thing is Sambandha. That means what is the relationship between this text and the subject. So Jiva Goswami Pad said this Sambandha is called Vacha Vachaka Sambandha. Vacha Vachaka Sambandha. The relationship between Vacha, that which is described, and Vachaka, the words which are describing him. Vacha Vachaka Sambandha. However, the words of this of Srimad Bhagavatam and the words of Bhagavat Sandarbha, which are describing Krishna, in this Vacha Vachakat Sambandha is such that there is no difference between Vacha and Vachaka. At all. Like Rupa Goswami said, Vacham Vachakam Mitideiti Bhavato Nama Surupa Dvayam Purvasmat Parameva Antakaranam Tatra Vijni Mahe Yastas Vinti Vita Parada Nevaha Prani Samantaj Bhavet Asenidam Pasasopihi Sadanam Badam Budo Majjati. Rupa Goswami Pad said, O oh Krishna, O oh Nam, he's praying to the holy name. O oh Nam Prabhu, you have two swarups. <laughs> Vachakam, that means this sound, Krishna. And Nam Prabhu, you have another swarup. Vacha, who is referred to by the name Krishna. That is Krishna himself in Vrindavan, playing a flute. It's very funny, Rupa Goswami is saying that Krishna in Vrindavan, is a swarup of Nam. <laughs> Understand? He's not saying Nam is one swarup of Krishna. He's saying that Krishna is a swarup of Nam. Very powerful. Because he's the follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> <laughs> so, but of these two swarups, one is more merciful than the other. They're exactly the same, but one is more merciful than the other. So what is that? Nam Prabhu. So Nam Prabhu and Krishna, they are not two things, they are one. But Nam Prabhu is more merciful. Because if you make some offense to the swarup of Krishna, he's here, Radharaman Lal is here. If you are serving him and you make some offense, it will make obstacles in your bhakti. But if you chant continuously, Nama Parada Yukta Nam Nama Neva Even you, you, you made some Nama Parada, but you chant continuously, then what will happen? Hmm? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Then, Nam will turn you upside down. Your feet are up, your head is down and 
throw you into the ocean of rasa. You will not know how what happened. Because Nam Prabhu is Upadravi. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said Upadravi. Upadravi means one who makes a big disturbance. Hmm? Krishna is completely makes, if he comes anywhere it's chaos hmm? so if you chant this holy name continuously then Brajanda Nandan Sham Sunda will come into your heart and take away everything all material existence and his Leela will begin wow. complete chaos what will he do next very shocking very surprising Adbhut this is the main ingredient of Rasa Krishna is the embodiment of Rasa and the main quality of rasa is what? Ascharya. It is adabhut, astonishing. So, here we're discussing in the beginning of Tattva Sandarbha, in explaining the Anubandha Chatustai, then the Sambandha is Vacha Vachaka Sambandha, that this very description of Krishna is Krishna. If you hear it from the lips of a pure devotee, as you are hearing, you experience directly. See Krishna. So, Sila, uh, then the other, uh, in the uh, Anubandha Chatustai, then the others are, the other two points, are Prayojan, the goal, and the Adhikar. Who's so the goal is love for Krishna, which is attained through the direct experience of the Vacha Vachaka Sambandha. Because we cannot see Krishna without love for Krishna. Praimanjana Chiruta Bhakti Vilochanena. By the eyes of love, Krishna can be seen. So, then the last one is Adhikar. Adhikar means eligibility, qualification. In other words, for every book, there is a qualification that you need to be able to study it. So Jiva Goswami, he said that, oh, this book, Tattva Sandarbha, should only by, be studied by those persons who have no worldly desires, who desire only the Nitya Seva of Sri Krishna. Only this. And if you don't want this, if you want other things, then don't study this Sandarbha. It will be very dangerous for you. Hmm? He is practically giving a curse. Hmm? <laughs> don't touch this book. Hmm? Go at once. There's the door. If you have material desires and you want to chase your worldly ambitions, the door is there. Leave now. Otherwise, it will be very dangerous for you. Okay, so no one's leaving, everyone's staying, that's good. <laughs> huh? But you've been warned. So generally, in the classical uh, Anubandha Chatustai, there is the, uh, the Vishai, the subject, the Sambandha, the Prayojan and the Adhikar. But Jiva Goswami actually gives the Vishai, Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayojan, he gives these four. And then he gives Adhikar separately. Just a small technical point, but for completeness, we're telling this. So then, we discussed this morning how Jiva Goswami, he showed that among the Shabda Praman, the Vedas, it's very difficult to understand the meaning of the Vedas, because only less than 6% are still available to us now. How many? There are four Vedas, and the four Vedas, each of the four Vedas are divided into four parts. Brahman, the Samhita portion, Brahman portion, Aranyaka portion, and Upanishad, correct. So, also, uh, these were also divided into, these four portions are divided into so many parts. How many parts? Test. If you fail the test, then you have to pay a fine. 1,130. So how many Vedic literatures are there? 4,520. Yes, 4,520. Good. So, and but less than 6% of these 4,520 Vedic literatures, Upanishads, Aranyakas, Samhitas and so on, are, are left. And it's also very difficult to study them. And we discussed this morning how gradually, gradually, step by step, 
Srila Jiva Goswami built up the case that if we want to know the Supreme Truth, we just have to do one thing. What is that? Take shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam. Grantaraj hmm? Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he glorifies Srimad Bhagavatam so much with verses from other Shastras and from Bhagavatam itself. Hmm? Dharmaha Prajita Kaitavat Parano Nimatsaranam Satam Vedam Vastavam Atravastu Shivadam Tapa Trayun Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamun Krite Kimba Parayarishwara Sajo Riddhya Vrutriyat Kritibhi Susru Sabis Tatanat This Srimad Bhagavatam kicks out all cheating religion. Hmm? All religion which has ulterior motives. It can be understood only by those who are Paramoni Matsaranam Satam Paramahamsas who are free from duality, who are free from envy, Icha and Dvesha, envy and attachment. Vedam Vastavam, the Srimad Bhagavatam, it presents the absolute truth, distinguishing reality for, from illusion for the benefit of all. When one can distinguish between reality and illusion, then the tapatrai, the threefold miseries of material existence are uprooted completely. There's no other way to overcome the suffering of this world. So Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimbapara Ishwara. This Srimad Bhagavatam was manifest by Bhagavan himself. See, Krishna has appeared in the form of Vyasadev in order to manifest this Srimad Bhagavatam. Kimbapara Ishwara means what is the need of any other scripture? So Vyasadeva has written, Kimba Para Ishra. He who has written all the Shastras, he's saying, Kimba Para Ishra. What's the need of all the other scriptures? Sadyorit Yavrut Tatakitibi Susru Sabis Tatchanat. Immediately, Tatchanat. Immediately, there and then. Susru Subihi. When a person who has been purified by the sanskar, by the. By the uh, pur refinement, purification process of diksha, whose heart is neat and clean. If that person will just what to speak of here, Srimad Bhagavatam, only he wants to hear it. So through Subhi, he wants to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Then immediately, Sadhyo, Tatsanat, in that very moment, Ridhyavarudhateyatra, Krishna comes into the heart of that person. And then the door of the heart shuts. And Krishna cannot get out. And he's trapped there. Avarudda. He cannot get out. He's kept in your heart forever. So how is Krishna trapped? Only by pranayana, rasayana, pranaya, pranaya, pranaya rasayana, dritang ripadne, sa bhavata, sa bhavata, bhagavata, pradana uktaha. One becomes a Mahabhagavat. By hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, then love comes and he becomes a Mahabhagavat. And then Krishna is trapped and he can never leave the heart of that devotee. So, here in this verse, Dharma Projita Kaitavo Atra. Atra means here. Sajori Dhyavarudhate Atra. Atra means here. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam here. So because the word here is three times, Atra, Atra, Atra. It, that means only Srimad Bhagavatam has this power. There's no other scripture which is so powerful. Only you desire to hear it and Krishna comes running. Atra, Atra, Atra. Only Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Jiva Goswami Pad said, Sarva Vedanta Saram hi Srimad Bhagavatam isyate tatar samaritritasya nanyasya syadrati kochit. Quoting from Srimad Bhagavatam. Sarva Vedanta Saram hi. Vedanta is the essence of the Vedas, and this is the essence of Vedanta. Tatar samaritritritasya. If a person has felt the satisfaction of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, what satisfaction? Rasa Amrita. The Amrita, the eternal nectar of Rasa. Then, 
That person will never want to taste any other scripture. He'll have no attraction for other things, only Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Srila Jiva Goswami is establishing the supreme position of the Bhagavat again and again. Hmm. He cannot keep up. He is putting all the verses on the screen. But it's coming too fast. Sarva Veda Itihasanam Saram Saram Samudritam This is not the essence of the Vedas. This is Saram Saram, the essence of the essence of all the Vedas and the, and the histories. So in this way, Jiva Goswami in great bliss, he is glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, in Tattva Sandarbha, he wants to establish, we have discussed the epistemology, that is Praman Tattva, evidence. But what does the evidence prove? That is called Prameya. So Praman is the evidence, and Prameya is what is proven by that evidence. So, Sila uh, Jiva Goswami wants to show that Krishna is the Param Tattva. He is understood as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. That is the full understanding of Krishna. That the Jiva is his Mamai Vangso Jiva Lukke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. His eternal, subjective, separated portion. Who is Jivera Swarupai Krishna Nitya Das? Krishna Ratatasa Shakti Beda Bed Prakash. He is different but also non different from Krishna. And Maya is also Krishna's energy. Maya is real. She's real. She's not an illusion. But when Maya acts on the Jiva, the Jiva is an illusion. Understand? Hmm? So Maya is real, the Jivas are real, Krishna is real, everything is real. So Sila Jiva Goswami, he is taking Praman from different Acharyas, from Madhvacharya, Ramanuja Acharya and others as well, to support the uh, evidence of Srimad Bhagavatam. But Bhagavatam is independent, it does not depend on anyone else, but just to support that. He is quoting from others. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took Diksha from Sila Ishwara Puri. He was disciple of Madhavendra Puri. He was disciple of Lakshmi Patikirtha. And he is a sannyasi in the line of Madhvacharya. So Madhvacharya's philosophy is called Tattvavad. Tattvavad. So the meaning of Tattvavad is Saravam Vastu Satyam Iti Tattvavadaha. Saravam Vastu. Satyam iti tattvavada. All things are real. You see? Why? Because he's fighting against Shankacharya. Shankacharya's teaching is Mayavad. Everything is an illusion. So Madhvacharya came and said, no, everything is real. So tattva, truth. Everything is The jivas are real, the Maya is real, and God is real. Hmm? It is not only that there's Brahman, Nivishesh Brahman, and uh, that the Jiva is illusion, and Bhagavan is illusion, Maya is illusion, and only Brahman exists. No, no, no. Tatpavad. Now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching is a somewhat development of the Tatpavad of Madhvacharya. So it is called, it is still a Tattva, but Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. Achintya, Madhvacharya has put emphasis on the difference. The, the dwaita, the duality, eternal differences between God, ba Brahma and Jiva, Brahma and Maya, Jiva and Jiva, Maya and Jiva, Maya and Brahma. So there are five types of difference Madhvacharya has put emphasis on. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has uh, taught in accordance with the Vedic aphorism, Shakti Shakti Matayo Abed, Shakti and Shakti Man are non-different. Hmm? So he has taught that the living entities and Maya, they are different and also non-different. Simultaneously. And that is due to the Achincha Shakti. 
of the Lord, his inconceivable potency. So this will be developed in more detail later in Bhagavad Sandarbha. Uh, now, in order to remove the confusion of impersonalism, Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya, they have uh, tried to explain, and they have explained nicely, the Prastan Trai. Because there's a tradition in India that if you want to establish your idea, then you should establish it on the basis of three things. That is called Prastan Trai, Bhagavad Gita, the ten main Upanishads or twelve main Upanishads, and Vedanta Sutra. So Shankaracharya commented on this. Jiva Goswami in Tattva Sandarbha said, Shankaracharya did not comment on Srimad Bhagavatam because Shankaracharya is the incarnation of Lord Shiva. And he had so much respect for Srimad Bhagavatam that he didn't want to distort its meaning. <laughs> but he's commented on the ten main Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita and Vedanta Sutra, the, the Prasthan Trai. And other Acharyas later, they would uh, comment on these and they would also quote from Shankaracharya and prove line by line how he's wrong. Now, our Gaudiyas for some hundreds of years, we did not have a direct sutra by sutra explanation of Vedanta. Why? Because we take that Srimad Bhagavatam is Vyasadeva's own explanation of Vedanta. So what is the need? <clears throat> now, the speciality of this Tattva Sandarabha of Jiva Goswami is that he is not going to comment on the Prastantrai to establish the absolute truth. He has left all that Vedas, Vedas, everything, and he is focusing just on Srimad Bhagavatam, which is full of rasa. Pipat Bhagavatam rasamalaya muru hao rasika bhuvi bhavoka. So he is focusing on this. And instead of refuting line by line this, the words of Shankaracharya, he's taking another angle. And that angle is, what is the anubhav, the realization of Vyas, Sila Vyasadeva, and the speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami. Hmm? Because you can even misinterpret verses of Bhagavatam, Kaivalya Ika Prayojanam, the supreme goal is Kaivalya. Huh? So you can, it's possible to misinterpret verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, but we can know that we have understood Srimad Bhagavatam properly if we look at what was the internal experience of Vyasadev, Srila Vyasadev and Shukadev Goswami, because that has been described in Srimad Bhagavatam itself. So as you know, in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a history. Very high in the Himalayas, in Badrik Ashram, Shamyaprash Ashram, on the bank of the Saraswati. One morning, Srila Vyasadev, he got up very early and he took bath and then he sat down and began to meditate. But he was feeling dissatisfied. Hmm? He has divided the Vedas into four. He has given the mm, uh, Itihasa, Mahabharata, and within that Bhagavad Gita, he has given Vedanta Sutra. But still, his heart is not feeling satisfied. This is the proof that all these scriptures, they cannot fully satisfy one. And just he was thinking, why am I feeling insufficient? Is it because I have not dived deeply into the nectar of Krishna's Leela? Anywhere in this text. Hmm? He had this suspicion that this was the cause. And he wanted to, because he had himself not entered into that. He wanted to enter into, and his heart was hankering for something more. So this is a principle in life. Hmm? 
You know that Jesus Christ said, Knock, and the door will be open. Yeah? So here Sila Vyasadeva is showing. When his heart was feeling insufficient and he needed something more, something higher, sweet, a mystery that he himself he had, was not yet able to enter into. Hmm? Then what happened? As he was sitting there meditating, then Vyasadev gave pranam to his Gurudev. Jai Gurudev. <coughs> and offered him a seat and some water. And very patiently sat before his Gurudev. His Gurudev knew his heart. He said, oh, Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Can a person be satisfied by accepting the body as the self? No. So then Vyasadev he prayed to Narada Muni. Just see in your life when you want to go more deeply, really, if you are sincerely hankering for Sri Krishna's service, then Sri Krishna is very kind. And Sri Guru will come, Diksha Guru or Shiksha Guru, and open the door to the secrets that were not open to you. Vyasadev, Sila Vyasadev said, O Gurudev, Tvam pariyatam ak ivati lokim antastaru vayo ivatma shakshi paravari brahmani dharmato bratai nyunam snatasu nyunam me vichakshva O Gurudev, just like the sun sees everything in the universe, so you travel everywhere in the universe, you see everything outwardly. Antacharo hmm? Vayur, and as Pran is moving internally, you are like the Paramatma Supreme Lord also in the heart and you see everything internally. Gurudev, you see everything outwardly and also inwardly. So please, even though I have done hard bratas and I have written all about Brahma, how to realize Brahma, but still I am feeling insufficient. So please, vichakshwa, alam vichakshwa, thoroughly explain to me, main yunam, what is lacking in me. Narabuni said, Bhavata Nudita, Prayam Yasho Bhagavato Malam Yeneva Aso Natusyeta Manye Tad Dasham Dashanam Kilam He said you have hardly at all described the beautiful sweet pastimes of Sri Krishna. Hmm? You have said something but hardly anything really. And only Krishna will be satisfied by you're writing these pastimes. And because Krishna is not satisfied, you are not satisfied. So, Manye Tad Darshanam Kil, I think that your Darshan, Vedanta Darshan, hmm, is Kilam. That means insufficient. 
Something is lacking there. So then Narad Rishi, he gave blessings to Vyasadeva. And he gave mantra to Vyasadev. Hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Tubyam Vyasadev. <laughs> Sankarsanayacha. I'm not going to give Diksha to everyone. So, so he gave this mantra, Diksha, and he told Vyasadev, you should go into Samadhi. So then Nadamuni left. And Srila Vyasadeva, he went into Samadhi. Bhakti yoga ina manasi samyak panhite male apasyat purusham purnam mayam chattad apasrayam. And when Srila Vyasadeva, panhite means that he completely stopped all movements of his jitta. Every movement of his mind was completely arrested. Hmm? Bhakti Yoga in a Manasi. And by the, the power of Bhakti Yoga, then Apasyat Purusham Purnam, he saw the Purna Purush. Oh, you can do it? Okay. Bhakti Yoga in a Manasi, Samyak Pranihita Himale. Of everything. I'm saying this. Bhagata. Bhakti Yoga in a Manasi, Samyak Pranihita Himale. So, He went into trance, he stopped his mind. Not like today. Many devotees, they try to agitate their mind. I have to imagine every so many things. Hmm? Only trying to imagine material things is not a transcendental realization. Hmm? One should just become absorbed in mantra. And then this mantra, when the mind becomes completely still, then the mantra will manifest everything. And Vyasadeva saw automatically, spontaneously. Krishna Lila is Swapakash, self-manifest. It is nitya, eternal reality. It can be touched by any speculation. Bhakti Yoga in Manasi Samet Panite Male. So Vyasadeva he saw manifest the self-manifest Lila of Sri Krishna, everything. How he was born in Gokul. How when he was a baby, he was stealing butter. How Madhya Yashoda bound him with a rope. How he pulled down Yamal Arjun trees. How he killed and liberated Putana, Trinavarta, Shakatasur, Bakasur, Agasur and others. How he danced on the head of Kalia. How he lifted Giraj Govita. How he played his flute on the full moon night of the Sharad season and all gopis came running to meet with him and see Krishna. We cannot say that Krishna did Rasalila. The Rasalila did Krishna. Rasutsavaha <laughs> from Pravito. Gopi Mandala Manditaha. Yogeshwaraina Krishnaina. Tasamadye. Dwayo Dwayaho Shukadev Goswami does not say Krishna has done Rasalila. He said then the Rasalila manifests. And Krishna was just the instrument in that. Yogeshwaraina Krishnaina. So even Krishna cannot do Rasalila. Hmm? But the Rasalila manifests. The Prem manifests and makes him dance. Krishna Nanachaya Prem Bhakta Nanachaya Apini Nanachaya Tina Nachiya Katai. Prem makes Krishna dance. Prem makes the devotee dance. And Prem itself dances. All three dance together. Hmm? So you think by your material mind, you can do the remembrance of Rasalila. Even Krishna cannot do Rasalila. What to speak of your material mind? Huh? No, there is a Prem Prakash. The Prem manifests this Lila. And Krishna himself is not the doer. He becomes only instrument. Oh, what's happening to me? I don't know. And he's dancing. Uh -huh. So, Vyasadev went into trance and experienced all of this. How one day Akura came and took Krishna to Mathura. And all Mathura Lila and Dwarka Lila, everything. And here he said, Apasyat Purusham Purnam. He saw the Purusham Purnam complete. 
So you cannot be a complete Purush. If you don't have a Shakti. Srila Bhakti Sansur Tako used to say that uh, you have to worship Krishna with Radha. Otherwise your so-called uh, worship, what are you worshiping? This is a um, Klip Tattva. Klip Tattva. That means eunuch. <laughs> your Ishtar is eunuch. Hmm? Because he has no Shakti. So, He saw uh, apasa purusham purnam. The kum, that means the purush is only purna when he is with purna shakti shimati radharani. Mayam chatara pasrayam. And he also saw Maya. And Maya was shy to come in front of Krishna. She was staying at a distance. And Silav Yasadev saw the jivas, all the souls, millions of souls, countless souls, they were under the control of Maya. And wandering here and there aimlessly, like foolish, blind people, going here and there, shopping. <laughs> he saw how all the living entities were suffering in Maya. So then, Anato Pasaman Sakshat, like the next verse, next verse or next verse, Anato Pasaman Sakshat. Bhakti Yoga Matoksaje Lokasya Janato Vidvangs Chakra Satvata Sanghitam. Next, next. It means Vyasadev realized that the anarthas, the unwanted desires, the ignorance of the living entities could be removed hmm, simply by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm. And so Srila Vyasadev then, what he realized then, he dictated it to Ganesh and it was written down, it became Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Yasham Vai Shurumanayam, next verse, Krishna Paramapurushe Bhakti Utpadite Pungsa Shoka Moha Bayapaha. Simply by giving the, the uh, aural reception, just by patiently, submissively hearing this Srimad Bhagavatam. Then what happens? The bhakti manifests, self-manifests in the heart and takes away all by all fear, shok, all lamentation and all illusion. So, Srila Vyasadeva, this is what he realized. He realized that Krishna is real, the jivas are real and Maya is real. The jivas are under the control of Maya and Maya is under the control of Krishna. Therefore, there's no way for the jivas to get out of Maya unless they surrender to the master of Maya. Daivi yesha gunamayi mama maya dratya mamaiva ye prapadyante mayametam tarantite. So, this was Srila Vyasadeva's realization. So, Jiva Goswami, instead of going through a step-by-step -step refutation of all the statements of Shankar Acharya on the Bhagavad Gita, on the Upanishads, and on the Vedanta Sutra, he's saying, look, the person who has manifested, compiled all the Vedas, in his maturity, when he was not fully satisfied, he became fully satisfied by going into trance. And when he went into trance, he said, Aham Brahmasmi, it's all one. No. <laughs> he didn't say that. He did not say Sarvam Kalvedam Brahma, everything is Brahma. Tattvamasi, Pragyanam Brahma. What Shankar Chari calls the Mahavakya, he didn't say any of this. What did he say? Hmm? He said, Gopi Bhisto Bito Nitya Bhagavan Balabat Kochit Udgayati Kochin Mugdas Tadvaso Daryantrabat. That Para Brahma, the Supreme Absolute Truth. Hmm? When the gopis of Vrindavan say, Oh, if you do a dance, I'll give you a ladu. Then he's dancing. <laughs> and then they give him sweet. <laughs> this is what Vyasa said. <laughs> he did not say, Ah, oh, Brahma's me. <laughs> Everything is an illusion. Hmm? Vyasa Dev said, Na pariyam niravadya samyudyam swasadu krityam vibhudayu shapiva. Ya mabhajan durjay geya sankla samrishita dva pratiyatu sadhuna. 
that that Parabrahma, he's like a young boy, very beautiful, sweet, teenage lover. And with tears in his eyes, he's telling his sweetheart, Shimati Radhika, Oh, I cannot repay you. Even if I served you every day for 311 trillion years, a life of Lord Brahma, then even I could not repay you for even one of the services that you have done for me because you have broken the shackles of household life. You have tra transgressed all dharma. You have neglected your own happiness in this life and in all future lives only to serve me. I am indebted to you forever. I cannot repay you. Only the joy that you experience by having such love is the payment for having such love. Hmm? This is what Vyasa saw. Hmm? So, then, Srila Jiva Goswami, he gives some another example. The example of Shukadeva Goswami. Because, Shukadeva Goswami, from his very birth, he was absorbed in Brahman. The oneness. Non-differentiation at all. Only self-awareness of, of the soul, but without any characteristics. No features at all. He was beyond the illusion of this world. He has no attachment or aversion. His consciousness is so fixed in Brahman. Nothing can disturb him. So, that Shukadev Goswami, he was in the womb of his mother. For many years. But he would not come out. Srila Vyasa Dev said, You are giving so much trouble to your mother. Can you please come out? <laughs> Sukadev said, no, <laughs> if I come out, then maybe I'll go in Maya. So I just want to be here and meditate on Brahman. <laughs> Srila Vyasadev said, look, I promise you, if you come out, you will not be in Maya. Sukadev Goswami said, I cannot accept your promise because you are married. <laughs> <laughs> And I have your son. <laughs> so, this is Mayavad. Vaishnavas don't think like this. Vaishnavas, the Mayavadis think. Not Mayavad, but Brahmavadis, they think like that. Mayavadis also, but Brahmavadis can think like that. So then, he said, I don't accept. So then, whose promise will you accept? He said, if Krishna will come personally, and give me a guarantee that I will not go in Maya, then I will accept. So he was not Mayavadi, like Shankaracharya, that is offensive. But Brahmavadi means they are attached to the experience of the oneness of Brahman. So then Krishna, Vyasadev prayed and Krishna came and said, I bless you that when you come out, you will, you will not be overwhelmed by Maya. So then Krishna went away. And then Shukadev Goswami came, 16 years old, <laughs> grown, completely naked. But he was absorbed in Brahman. He does not know if he is uh, wearing clothes or not wearing clothes. He has no idea. And he came out and immediately he walked to the door and went outside. And Vyasadev was saying, come back, come back. <laughs> So his dis the disciple of Shukadev Goswami in Srimad Bhagavatam, he says, Yam prabrajantam anupitam apita krityam dvaipayano barakatara yajuhava putra iti tanmayatayo taravo vinedu stangsava bhuta ridiyam munimanatos. I bow down to my Gurudev Shukadev Goswami. Sutta Goswami is saying. My Gurudev Shukadev Goswami is such that Yam prabrajantam. He became parabrajak. Hmm? Like a, a sannyasi wandering everywhere. When? The moment he was born. Hmm? If you're born, there have to be so many sanskars. Nabi Chaitan sanskar. You have to have the mm, first grain sanskar, Namkaran sanskar, ear piercing sanskar. There are so many 
uh, and then initiation, diksha, upanaya and sanskar. So according to the Vedas, you have to undergo all of these rituals. But yam prava jantam anupayita mapayita kritya, with no rituals, with no sanskars at all, he just left home. Dwaipayano verhakatar ajwav, and his father, Dwaipayan Vyasadev, he felt so much separation. And Vyasadeva was calling, Ha Putra, Ha Putra, Oh my son, Oh my son, and running after him as he was going into the forest. But Shukadev, he just disappeared into the forest. Hmm? Oh, as he, Shukadev was going, there were some ladies, young ladies, they were bathing in the river naked. And Shukadev Goswami came by. They did not cover themselves. Because they saw, He's not even seeing us. Then Vyasadev came, and when Vyasadev was running, <laughs> trying to catch him, then those young girls, they covered themselves. Oh. <laughs> See, look, Vyasadev said, I am old enough to be your great-grandfather. <laughs> I have a very long <laughs> white beard. <laughs> and my son is like your age, and also naked. When he came, you were not shy, but seeing me, you became shy. How is it possible? <laughs> hmm? They said, because when we saw him, we understood that for him, there is no difference between Lakri and Larki. <laughs> Larki means a girl, and Lakri means a dry piece of firewood. Hmm? Hmm? If you sit down next to a dead piece of firewood, Hmm? Or if you sit down next to a naked woman, same. No difference. Because he does he has no external vision even of the world. Only he is absorbed in Brahman. This is the position of Shukadev Goswami. No attachment, no aversion, no Maya is touching him at all. So then Vyas Silla Vyasa could not find him, so he went home. And he was thinking, how can I? Catch him. Putraiti <laughs> Tanmayatayo. Oh my son, oh my son. Taravo Bineus. When Vyasadev was calling, my son, my son, Shukadev Goswami did not answer. Oh my father, my father. Who gave the answer? Taravo. The trees. Oh my son, oh my son. And the trees echoed. Oh my son, oh my son. <laughs> that means the trees, they were making fun. They were criticizing Vyasadev. Oh, my son, he was saying it. Oh, my son, oh, my son. <laughs> what are you saying, oh, my son? Who is son? Who is father? We are souls in this world. You are born in one family for a few moments, and then you die, and then you go in another family, and another family you had. You have been the son and the daughter of millions of persons, and they have been their, your sons and daughters and everything. These relations are not real. It's like getting on a, the carriage of a train and you ride for a few stations. Some people were already on the train and before you arrive at yours, they get off. And then you arrive at, and as you're going along, some others get on and then you get off and they stay. So family is like that. You are born, that means you're in a carriage. Mother, father, brother, sisters. While you're there, some other, other brothers and sisters join. They are born and then someone dies. Then in the end, uh, then you die and you, then you get on another carriage. Hmm? So, you are Vyasadev, you are the compiler of all the Vedas, why are you saying, my son, my son? This is only illusion. So, the, the trees, they beca the trees became the guru of Vyasadev. So, Sutta Goswami part is saying, why? Because, my guru, Shukadev Goswami, is in the heart of every living being. So he's saying, because the disciple sees, my Guru Dev is everywhere, seeing everything, and is teaching me through everyone. Mm -hmm. So only by the glance of Shukadev Goswami, the trees became enlightened and gave lessons in Vedanta to the to Vyasadev. <laughs> my Guru Dev is so great. Sutta Goswami is praying like this. Huh? So. 
But Vyasadev, actually, he was not attached to his son. He was not attached to his son. You see, Vyasadev had compiled the four Vedas and given to his four disciples. He gave Sama Veda to Jaimini Rishi, hmm? then to Paila Rishi, Sumantu Rishi and Angira he gave the Yajur Veda, Rig Veda, Tava Veda. But now, by the mercy of Narad Muni, he had realized Srimad Bhagavatam. To whom will he give Srimad Bhagavatam? He was thinking of a qualified person. And he thought, oh, this person, he is qualified to be, to receive Srimad. So he wasn't running, oh my son, oh my God, due to material attachment. But out of mercy to him and to the whole world. So then Srila Vyasadeva came up with a plan. He told his disciples, oh, come here. He had some disciples. He said, listen to me. Baha pidam natavara vapu kana yoka nikaram bibrad basa kanaka kapisham vajayantim chamalam randran venam adarasudaya purangu paprinde brindaranyam sopadaramanam prabhisad gita kirti. Memorize this verse and go into the forest and sing. So then the disciples of Yas went out to the forest and they were singing Baha pidam natavara vapu. Bahapita means decorated with the peacock feather. Natabara Vapuhu. His body is decorated like a Natabara. Just like when there's a Vedic drama, then before the drama takes place, then a very beautiful young boy and young girl, fully decorated with so many ornaments and cosmetics, they come onto the stage to attract the attention and focus the attention of the audience before the drama begins. So that young man is called Natabara. So Krishna is Natabara Vapuhu. Now someone may say, when you compare one thing with another, then the thing with which you are comparing it is superior. So how can you say Krishna, who is more beautiful than any anything else, he is like Natabara, because that would make the Natabara superior. So that cannot be the meaning, Natabara Vapuhu. So the meaning is this, Every part of his body was Natabara. Hmm? In other words, his garland was swinging and dancing and it attracts your attention. And you forget everything else, only the garland. When Gopi sing. Then his earrings are swinging. Then they only see the beauty of his earrings. Then his eyebrows are dancing. His eyebrows are Natabara. His eyes are Natabara. His earrings are Natabara. His garland is Natabara. His pitambara, his cloth is moving Natabara. His fingers are Natabara on the holes of his flute. Hmm? Everything is like a Natabara. Attractive. Kaniyo hmm? Karnikaram. He has a Karnikara flower on his ear. Hmm? He's surrounded by his friends and entering into the forest. So as they were singing this, Shukadeva was in the forest and he heard. And uh, he became amazed. And he came running. He said, tell me more. I want to know more. So they said, okay, wait. Then they went home. And they told Vyasadev. Vyasadev said, you see someone in the forest? They said, yes. We saw one young man, very beautiful, with lotus eyes, completely naked. And hearing this verse, he came running. Silly Vyasadev thought, oh, my plan is working. <laughs> so Vyasadev taught them another verse. Ahu bakiyam stanakala kutam jigam seyapaya dapta sadvi labai gatim dapta chittam tatanyam kam vadailum shanam brajima. After Krishna had left this world, Uddhav was crying. And he said, Oh, everyone has to surrender to someone. You have no choice. You have to surrender to your family members, to your teacher, to your employer, or to the king, to the government, or you have to surrender to the demands of the senses, you have to surrender to sleep, and to hunger, and you have to surrender to old age and to death. No one can avoid surrender. Many things are out of our control and forced upon us. Hmm? 
So where will you go for shelter? So Udav saying, oh, who will not take shelter of Sri Krishna? Who is so merciful that when Putana came full of envy to poison him when he was a baby, but he liberated her and gave a position as a nursemaid in Golok. Huh? Is anyone so kind? Kind person may give something. But Krishna gave himself forever to the person who wanted to kill him when he was just a tender baby. How merciful. So then those students went out in the forest, they were singing, Aho Baki Yam Stana Kala Kutam. And then Shukadeva heard this. First, in the first verse, he heard about the beauty of Krishna's roop, his form. And now he heard about Krishna's goon. So realization of Krishna does not come all at once. It's very foolish. Persons who have no realization, they're trying to meditate on Leela. The result is nothing. Only you remember your own samskars and pastimes. Hmm? First, the realization of Krishna's roop comes. Then Krishna's gun qualities. Then Krishna's associates. Then your swarup and seva. And then the yoga pit lila. And then swarasiki astakali lila. Like this in stages. When we we discussing the sandarbhas, when we come to bhakti sandarbha, then Sila Jiva Goswami Pad will explain all of this in detail. Nowadays there's chaos and confusion everywhere because the devotees, in many devotees in our sampradaya, they are not educated in the teaching of our sampradaya, as it was presented by Sila Jiva Goswami. So first he realized Krishna's beautiful form, and then Krishna's qualities manifest in the heart. And he said to those students of Vyasadev, Oh, from where did you learn this? They said, come with us. And they brought him back to the ashram where Srila Vyasadev was waiting. Ah, my plan worked. And now Shukadeva Goswami he came home and then Srila Vyasadev began to teach him all Srimad Bhagavatam. So Jiva Goswami quotes this verse, Atma Ramas Chamune Yo, Neaganta Apyuru Krame, Koravanta Hoyta Kim Bhaktin, Itam Bhuta Gano Hari. The great sages, Munis, and Atma Ramas, those who take pleasure in the soul, who have no attachment to this world, Neaganta Apyuru Krame. Neaganta means scripture. They are beyond the scriptures. They are liberated souls. They don't have to follow any rules and regulations. And Granta can also mean the false ego, the knot in the heart. So he, Shukadev Goswami was near Granta. He has no false ego, no body identification at all. He is Mukta Purush, liberated. Nothing of the material world can attract him. But he became attracted to the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? Because the Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna and his qualities, it proves that they are not of this material world. You see, Mayavadi thinks that any form, any qualities, any personality, any speciality must be material. But Jiva Goswami is presenting the case of Shukadev Goswami. He was already liberated from everything material. But his heart became captured by something that must be superior to Brahman. Someone said, well I, well, I like Brahman. It's my personal choice. Uh, all right. But the life, the realization of Shukadev Goswami proves that Krishna, the realization of Bhagavan, see Krishna, it is far, far superior to the realization of Brahman. So, Sila, Vyasadev, he quotes many verses in this, in this regard. Sorry, Jiva Goswami in this Andarabhasi. He, he says that Shukadev Goswami spoke about his own experience. He said, Parinishtitopi Nargunya Uttama, Parinishtitopi Nargunya Uttama Shloka Leelaya Grihita Chaita Raja Ashe Akhyanam Yadadita Van. 
If someone who asks Sukadev Goswami, you are already a liberated person, you don't need anything. Why did you spend so much time and effort to study 18,000 verses of Srimad Bhagavatam? It's a very big endeavor to do for someone who doesn't need anything. Huh? So, Sukadev Goswami is saying, Parinishtito Pinar Gunya, even though I was fixed in the Nirgun state, beyond three gunas. Huh? Uttama Shloka Leelaya. These pastimes of Krishna, Uttama Shloka, who is very sweet and very merciful. Then, Grihita Chaita Raja say, O oh, Prikshit Maharaj, Shukadev Goswami is saying, My heart was captured by the sweet pastimes of Krishna. Akyanam Yadaditavan. Therefore, I studied this Srimad Bhagavatam. His heart was fully captured. Now, Sila Jiva Goswami Pad wants to establish the greatness of Srimad Bhagavatam by establishing the greatness of the speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadev Goswami. When King Parikshit was out hunting one day, he became very thirsty. So he came to the ashram of Shamik Rishi and said, Oh, can you give me some water? But Shamik Rishi was sitting in meditation. He was in a trance. So he could not even hear him. Prakshi Maharaj thought, This Rishi is pretending not to hear me. He is disrespecting me. So then with his bow, he picked up a dead snake and put it around his neck like a garland. And then he went away. Then Sringi Rishi, the young Brahmin son of Shamik Rishi, he came, oh, who has, who has disrespected my father? And he was crying. Then his father opened his eyes, he saw the snake and he just threw it. And he said to his son, why are you crying? He said, because you have been insulted. Hmm? And I could not tolerate that you had been insulted. So, that young boy took his Brahmin thread and... He broke it and made a curse. Who has done this to you? He should die in seven days. Oh. Then Shami Krishi was not pleased. What have you done? Even the boy was crying. He was crying because he rashly, out of anger, in the moment he cursed the king to die. And he knew in his heart it was not right. So that is also why he was crying. So then his father sent news to Prakshit Maharaj, oh, you will die in seven days. Prakshit Maharaj thought, very good. <laughs> I was looking for an excuse to get out of my responsibilities. <laughs> he was the emperor of the world, he has so many queens and so many palaces and responsibility for the whole world. And he was thinking, how can I get out of this? Okay, this is a good excuse. So he took off his crown and all his armor and everything. And in very simple cloth, he went to the bank of the Ganga. So when he arrived there, it was a great miracle that from all over the universe, great sages appeared there. Gautam Rishi, but in the Brigu Rishi, Parasara Rishi, Vashistya, Vishwamitra, Asita, Devala, all the great rishis from the earth and from other planets, they all gathered there. Vyasadev came also. Parishuram, Narad Muni. And Prakshit Maharaj, he asked, what is the supreme, exclusive duty of all living beings, and especially of one who is about to die? So when he asked this question, no one was ready to give him an answer. And just at that moment, there was some d disturbance. Some women and children were laughing. Hmm? Some children were throwing stones and dust. And one young man, very beautiful with lotus eyes and completely naked, he was walking in this direction and the village children were throwing dust on him. 
and laughing. That what is this naked person walking around? <laughs> but as he approached the rishis, the rishis could see he has all the characteristics of a Mahapurush. They could see his divine blazing effulgence. And all the rishis stood up and folded hands. Seeing this, those women and children became afraid and they all left him. And the rishis offered a seat and Shukadev Goswami came and then he sat there. He looked like the moon surrounded by the stars. And he was selected, oh, you, he, you will be the one who will answer the question of Prakshit Maharaj. Yeah? What should one do? If he will, what is the main duty for everyone to do? Hear the pastimes of Krishna. So he will explain. And when Shukadev Goswami began to speak, Srimad Bhagavatam, then even though his guru was there, Srila Vyasadev, even though Narad Muni, the guru of his guru, was there, Vyasadev is the incarnation of Bhagavan. Parasharam was there. He is also a Shaktivesh avatar of Bhagavan. But when they listened to Shukadev Goswami speaking, Nigama kalpataro galitaham palam Shukamukha ramrita daba samyutam Vibhat bhagratam rasmahalayam Murahura sikabu vibhavu kaha When Shukadev Goswami spoke, just as a fruit has the first bite of a fruit, there's some bitterness in the surface. But if the fruit has been pecked by the beak of a parrot, then it becomes sweet. So in the same way, though Narad and Vyas, they knew Bhagavatam, but when it was spoken by Shukadev Goswami, even his Guru and Param Gurudev, they thought, we have never heard anything like this before in our life. <laughs> so all accepted Shukadev Goswami as their Guru. Hmm? So Srila Sutta Goswami said, Ya swanu bhava makila sutisara mekam adhyatma deepa utitisti satam tamandam samsarinam samsarinam karunayeya purana guyam tam vyasa sunam upayami gurum muninam yaha swanu bhava akila sutisara mekam first canto It is the Mangala Charnam actually of Sutta Goswami. He is praying to his Guru. He is saying that I bow down and worship Vyasasunum, the son of Vyasadev, Shukadev Goswami. Guru Muninam, he was the Guru of all the Munis. Even he became on that day like the Guru of Vyas and Narad and Parisharam, everyone. Vashishta, Viswamita, Gautam. Gautam Rishi has written Nyai Shastra, Kapil, Patanjali, and, and their followers, all the Munis who were following the different Sad Darshans, they all accepted him as their Guru. What does it mean? Hmm? That means that what he taught was superior to all of those Sad Darshans. Yeah, this. Yaswana Bhava Makila Sutisaram Ekam. And Shukadev Goswami, he spoke. The Srimad Bhagavatam is called Ya Swanu Bhavam Akila Sruti Saram Ekam. Ekam means one, it's unique. Sruti Saram, it is the essence of the Vedas. Akila, of all the Vedas. And it is Swanu Bhavam. That means that the Srimad Bhagavatam has its own inherent Shakti to manifest itself in your heart. Hmm? Just by hearing <laughs> the pastimes of Krishna manifest. Yaswana Bhava Makilasu Titaram Ekam Adyatma Deep. This Srimad Bhagavatam is like a spiritual lamp. So when you hear it, it illuminates your heart. It destroys all ignorance and transports one across the ocean of material existence. Samsari Nam Kurunayaya Purana Guyam. So Vyasadeva, the guru of all the munis, he spoke this 
Purana Guyam means secret Purana. That means the Purana itself is full of confidential Lila, Rahasya, confidential pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So, Karunayaha, Karunayaha means he spoke it. How? Out of Karuna, out of mercy. Why? Because Sukadev Goswami is so, has such deep frame for Radha and Krishna. Then how could he speak without Nayanam Galadasudari Avadanam Gadgadarudayagira? His voice will be choked and he will not be able to speak. If Shukadev Goswami's love for Shimati Radhika is so powerful that if Shukadev Goswami will only say the two syllables, Ra Dha, then he'll faint for six months. <laughs> this is why directly he has not said the name of Radha, but he said everything indirectly. Because if he will openly say this nectar, the nectar of Radha Naam, eh, then he will faint for six months and Prakshit Maharaj only has seven days to live. <laughs> so it will be a big disaster. Huh? So, therefore, the Karuna Shakti of Krishna came and entered into him and gave him the Darya Dharan Shakti, that means the power to hold his patience. Hmm? Describing Raslila, he would faint. But the Karuna Shakti came in him and kept him in outer consciousness that he could speak. Eh? You can see when Shukadev Goswami is talking, describing Brahmargit. He's describing Brahmargit. Ten verses how Radharani is talking to with the bumblebee. Madhupakitava bhando maasprishangrin sapadna kucha vilalita mahala kunkamasma suvina bahatumarupatistan maninam prasadam yarusarasibitambyam yasudutastamitrik. And he's describing the beautiful ecstasies of Radharani as she's criticizing the bumblebee just for being friends with Krishna. You are black and he is black. You are fickle, you go and taste the nectar from one flower to another to another. So he's same, he tastes one gopi, another gopi, another gopi. And just like the bumblebee becomes intoxicated with the nectar of the flowers, he loses discrimination. And then he goes to a flower that has no nectar. So Krishna, he's left us beautiful gopis and now gone to tasteless kubja in Mathura, where there's no rasa at all. So she's criticizing the bumblebee for being just like Krishna, being a cheetah, in so many ways. And, and Radhika's bhav is going higher and higher. And then in the end, Bhujum aguru suganda murjadas takkadanu. Radhika said, oh, when will Krishna, whose hand is fragrant like agur, When will he come back and place his hand on my head and promise me? Oh Radhika, I went all over the world to so many countries and even other planets. And I met with beautiful women everywhere. I met with the daughters of kings and the daughters of Nagas and Devas and all species. But none of them can love me like you. So now I have come back and I will never leave you again. When will Krishna come and promise me that he will not leave? And Radhika fainted. Shukadev Goswami is telling this. And then the chapter ends. And then the next chapter he is speaking about Mathura and Kubya. Why? Because whenever Shukadev Goswami, his ecstasy went so high that he was about to fall unconscious. Then the, the Karuna Shakti uh, would come and then distract his mind and take him to another subject. So this is why you see the, the chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam, they don't always go in order. Because uh, sometimes the Karuna Shakti has to come and distract him and take him somewhere else. Otherwise he'll drown too much in the rasa. So samsarinam karunayaha purana goyam tam vyasasunam upayami gurum muninam I bow down to that. Shukadev Goswami. Everywhere in Srimad Bhagavatam he says Sri Sukha Uvacha. 
Sri Sukha means that he is very beautiful. Sri. When Sukadev Goswami is describing the Nandotsav, the birth of Krishna, at that time Nanda Maharaj is so happy. And there's a big celebration and all the bridge buses are dancing and throwing yogurt everywhere. Jiyo Shamala Hala, Jiyo Shamala Hala, Pili Teri Padari Alankala, Jiyo! throwing yogurt mixed with the turmeric, everything's become wet and yellow and they're sleeping on the floor because it's everywhere. <laughs> huh? Do you know there was one devotee named Srinivas Acharya. So one day Srinivas Acharya, he went into trance and he saw the holy lila of Radha and Krishna, how they were throwing color. And then later when Srinivas Acharya came out from his trance, there was a red color on his cloth. From his trance, it manifests outside. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, everywhere it's written, Sri Shuka Uvacha. So when Shukadev Goswami is describing the birth of Krishna and the Nandutsa of the celebration of Nanda Maharaj, his Sri Shuka Uvacha, he becomes so beautiful because he's seeing everything in his trance and the yogurt is appearing on his face and in his hair as he's speaking. Yaswan Bhava Makila Sutisaramekam. This is the power of Srimad Bhagavatam. It manifests realization. And that realization is even coming out on the body of Shukadev Goswami. Huh? When Shukadev Goswami is describing the Rasalila, Sri Yasuka Uvacha, Sri means he's beautiful. Why? Because his hairs are standing on end. Tears are flowing from his eyes. He's trembling. He's Overwhelmed with sattvic bhavs. Hmm? Shukadev Goswami said, Nishamya gitam tadananga vardanam Bajastriya krishna grihita manasa Ajagmu and yonyam Alakshit udyamaha Saryatta kanto Javalola kundalaha When Krishna played his flute in the full moon night at Bhangshibhat in Brindava then Nishamya, hearing that flute, hmm? Nisham, not sh sh uh, Shamya, Nishamya means ni, only a little bit. Hmm? Even hearing one note, Tadananga Vardhanam, then the influence of Cupid, Kamadev, the desire to serve Krishna as his lovers, Ananga Vardhanam rose up in the gopis' hearts. Brajastya Krishna Grihita Manasa, and the sound of the flute came. Like a thief. The thief does not come through the front door. He goes through the side door. <laughs> so the thief of Krishna's flute went into the ear of gopis. And then entered into the house to the treasury room. Where all the jewels were there. Their lajja, their shyness. Their darya, their patience. Their local lajja, their fear of the criticism of society. Every, all the jewels of a young woman. The sound of Krishna's boot stole it and then quickly ran back to his master. Because if there's a mafia, you know, then the boss of the mafia does not do the stealing. He stays where he is and his soldiers, they go and they do the stealing. So Krishna's flute went and did the stealing and then brought all the goods back to his boss. So the flute took all the jewels from the heart of the gopis. So Brajastya Krishna Grihi Tamanasa. And brought them all back and gave the hearts of gopis to Krishna. Now Krishna owns their hearts. So the gopis immediately got up. They got up and without waiting 
for their sakis. Usually for gopi goes anywhere. She will get together with a friend, one, two, three, four, five friends, and they'll go together. But there's no time. The influence of Cupid is so powerful. Just hearing one note, cling one note of Christmas flute, and they are running there. No, then Alakshita not seen by anyone else and not seeing each other. Running, and as they're running, hmm, they gradually, Shukadev Goswami said, Sa yatra kanto javalola kundalaha. They arrived. Yatra means there. In that place, but it means close by. In, in Sanskrit there are two words. Yatra and Tatra. So Yatra means over here and Tatra means over there. So Shukadeva says they arrived here. Hmm? How? Javalola Kundra. With their earrings. As the gopis arrived, Krishna saw them coming. And as they arrived, then they stopped and the earrings were swimming. Trembling. Why are gopis' earrings trembling? Because gopis thought. Oh, the, sorry, the earrings are thinking that Krishna very easily stole all the jewels from the, which were kept secretly in gopis' hearts. <laughs> So, these jewels, we, the earrings were on the outside, then how easily he will steal us. So, the earrings were trembling in fear. Hmm? <laughs> and they were also trembling, because they knew that in the loving pastimes in the Nikunj, then Radha, Krishna's necklaces, waist belts, everything all get broken and scattered here and there. Hmm? Their pearls are going up here, there, all over the flowers. And underneath, <laughs> hmm? so the, the earrings were thinking, oh, now there'll be one Kama Yudha love battle and we'll get smashed. <laughs> so the earrings were trembling out of fear. <laughs> so Shukadev Goswami said, Sayatra Kanto, they arrived there where their lover was waiting. But he never said they arrived Tatra, they arrived Yatra. Why? Because Shukadev Goswami was already there. Understand? Shukadev Goswami is Radhika Sukh. Sri Sukh means Sri Asukha, the pa very beloved parrot of Radharani. So Sri Sukh had already flown to the Rasalila and was in, uh, sitting on the branch of Bhansi Bhatt. And so in Srimad Bhagavatam, Sayatra, and then the gopis arrived. Why is he saying? Because he was already there. So Shukadev Goswami is such a great personality. Hmm? When Radha and Krishna, they're alone in the Kunj, Nikunja, then Lalita and Vishaka, they cannot be there. Hmm? Rupamanjari, Rakimanjari may be there. But out of humility, they may go outside and they may look through the Jalarandra. Hmm? And sometimes, Shukadev, in the form of the Parati, that Shukadev can be there. And watching the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Sometimes, Radhika will faint. So then, who will know what Krishna is doing at that time? Shukadev Goswami. Sometimes Krishna will faint. Then what is Radharani doing? Who will know? Shukadev Goswami. Sometimes Radharani and Krishna both will faint. And then who will tell the Leela? Shukadev Goswami. Ya Swanu Bhavu Makila Suti So this is why when he arrived there in that assembly, all the Rishis stood up and they gave pranam to him. And when he spoke from his realization and by the power of the Shabda Brahma, those who were listening, they were also realizing. And even Vyasadev, his guru, and Narad Muni, his Param Guru, they were, oh, we never heard such beautiful katha before. Like so Srila Jiva Goswami in Tattva Sandarbha is explaining, this scripture is the best. This is the greatest. Why? Because the speaker is Shukadev Goswami. Srila Shukadev Goswami Pada Ki Jai. Sri Tattva Sandarbha Ki Jai. Srila Jiva Goswami Pada Ki Jai. Sai Gaur Premanande Ki Jai. Sri Krishna. So we'll sing.
saying good to go to Arctic and have kirtan. And then everyone, please be ready to come in the morning at 7 o'clock for Arctic and for Japa. And tomorrow we'll continue with um, the Bhagavad Sandarbha and Paramatma Sandarbha.
Yeah! <laughs> 